Welcome to St. Anthony's. Today is the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord. The readings for tonight's Mass in the Breaking Bread are on page 164. Today's Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Tom Riverman, Mary and Roland West, also for Carol Powers, and for the repose of the soul of relatives and friends, and in remembrance of all the men and women who served in the U.S. military. Let us take a minute to consciously acknowledge that we are in the presence of God and ask him to help us to hear what he wants to say to us today. Today's first reading describes the ascension of Jesus and his promise of the Holy Spirit. The disciples see Jesus being taken up into the clouds only to return to them in the Spirit. They are to carry on the mission of Jesus. The ascension of Jesus marks the end of his journey on earth and signals the beginning of a new era. The mission of the church begins under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In today's second reading, Paul begins by praying that all believers in Jesus will be blessed by wisdom and revelation of his ways. He prays that they may be enlightened on three things. First, hope which is rooted in the possession of the Holy Spirit. Second, the inheritance of God's love, life. And third, the tremendous power of God's abiding presence. Just as God raised Jesus from death to life in the resurrection, so too will Christians experience radical change in their own lives. What happened to Jesus will happen to those who believe in him. In today's gospel, the risen Lord shows the apostles how the scriptures had foretold that the Christ would suffer and rise again. Jesus also gives them a mission, the proclamation of repentance and forgiveness of sins, and promises to send the Holy Spirit to them. They return in joy to Jerusalem to await the Spirit. The ascension event does not mean that Jesus has abandoned us. He is present to us through the Holy Spirit in and through liturgical celebrations of our church and wherever two or three are gathered in his name. Let us pray. God, our Father, make us joyful in the ascension of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we follow him into the new creation, for his ascension is our glory and our hope. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome back. I was going to say I'm back, but I guess you already got me there already. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate great peace, a feast of ascension of our Lord, the feast that is our hope and our dream, that someday we too will be with the Lord. Let us pause for a moment to reflect the times of our lives when we have forgotten God's call to us for holiness, for the hope and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. For these times, let us ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you died and rose again, fulfilling all prophecy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you ascended to the right hand of the Father. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you promised to send your Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, 
Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took them from his sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe in accord with the exercise of his great might which he worked in Christ raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens far above every principality authority power and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciple, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sin would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending my, the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his eyes and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were caught continually in the temple, praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Anything unusual about today's first reading? Anything peculiar? The very first one. Okay, the very first one, but what else about peculiar about it? What did the disciples do when Jesus up, lived up to heaven? And the angel, two angels appeared to him. They were standing there staring at the sky. They were standing and gawking in the sky. They said, Man of Galilee, why are you looking up to, to the sky? Why did the angel tell him that? You can imagine them just looking and looking and looking. Yeah, work in the they were transfixed by that event. Because he had work to do, he told me. That's right, base, you know, they they have some now you just can't there, stop them, stand there and gawk forever. You have to move on your life. You know, oftentimes in life, whether it be a tragic event or a happy event, we tend to stick at that event, don't we? We tend to what do you call it, defining moment of our life. And we somehow allow that defining moment to be the, the end all and be of our life. Think about the, the event last, last, I think it was last week, right? At the tech in Texas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The tragedy. Oh, which just seems so much shooting up. But anyway, yeah, the, you know, the recent shooting in Texas. I mean, you think about the, the, the victims and their family. 19 children, fourth grader, 10 year old, two adults, two teachers. You can imagine their families. The last couple of days had been horrendous. I can't imagine they'll get a wink of sleep at all. And you know, I, for me as a priest, every time I think about these events happening, I'm thinking, I wonder what the how it is. You know, when you are and that that's your work, that's your life. You kind of wonder what would a per, what would your confrere in that same in that same place? How would he deal with it? The, the awful events. You know, if you're a teacher, you probably have the same thought. Well, what I what would I would do if I were a teacher? You know, how would I handle this if it happened to my school, to my place of work? And if you're a parent, you would probably have the same thought. Would I feel comfortable taking my kids to school anymore? You know, would I be able to do that? Would every time I take my kid, drop off my child to school, which you would imagine a safe place. You know, I can't get safer than that if an elementary school is not safe. What is a safe place left? You know, you, every time you kind of wonder, I would imagine as a parent, is this the last, am I, you know, is this the last time I'm gonna see my child? I mean, I can only imagine. And for the, the survivors, you, you can only imagine how are they gonna go on with their life now? You know, even the little kids gonna be suffering from this for God knows how long, maybe the entire life. And I was, you know, I was thinking more and more about that this past week and troubled my heart. I'm thinking, you know, how does a person deal with this kind of, you know, the worst thing, scenario possible in life? I would imagine, you know, there's nothing worse than this. How does a person deal with it? How does a person go on? You know, and I was thinking, you know, the same thing as the investigation continue on, the police will have to ask themselves as the invest, you know, as you have served, you have heard already, They'll be wondering why a whole hour you stood outside the campus. You know, if you rushed in, you know, they're going to have some tough questions to answer. How are they going to answer that? You know, even if nothing, 
nothing come from the inquiry, they would have to ask themselves, they know what they did or didn't do. Should I disobey my superior, just gone in there anyway? What should I have done? And you can imagine their dreams and their nightmare with the parents begging, you know, come in and rescue my child. You know, that's going to have to be something they're going to have to deal with. And I was reflecting upon, you know, as the tragic event of all this, that one teacher died and her husband of 25 years died two days later of a heart attack. They say, you know, he died of a broken heart, perfectly understandable. A switch situation, which is even worse by all this. And you can imagine, you know, now that family, I thought about them because they were Catholic. They go to Sacred Heart, by the way. You know, in that, in that, play, in the, in that city, Sacred Heart, Catholic Church, and now four orphans left behind. I mean, what could you possibly say to four, to four children who have lost their parents on the same week, you know, a couple of days apart from one another? And you think about life, it's such a quick and brief event, it seems like, you know, it's so unfair, it's so quick and, and rapid. And you know, when I think about the resurrection of Jesus, his ascension to Lord, the Lord, it's ultimately, that's what our life is about. Our hope ultimately rests on this one particular event, that Jesus Christ not only rose from the dead, but he came back to the disciples and taught them of what, of what ultimately their life means. And now they have a choice, a decision to make. We have heard today's gospel. You are the witness of this event, amazing event. Now the choice is up to you. What are you going to do about this event? Or do you keep it to yourself? Or do you choose to ignore it? Or do you choose to be stuck in your event? I mean, in your defining woman? Or do you allow this woman to transform you and say, you know, there's a lot of people who need my help out there. What am I going to do about it? You know, as Christians, what would God call us do, to do? To go out and serve. To go out and serve, to be witness. To be witness to, to others. And you know, life, as we all know, can be very cruel. No matter what you do, how much money you have, how much fame you have, how much many bodyguards you have, even the top notch, can these walls, can these high walls, bodyguards and top notch security system, can it protect you from death? No. no. Yeah, death will always creep in. But you know the answer for death? Jesus. It's Jesus. That Jesus is ultimately our hope of our life. The joy of our life. <laughs> and you know, to, for this message to sink in, he'll be, he'll, the, the, the gospel that he tells us, not yet. You'll be clothed in glory soon. The Holy Spirit will come upon you as we will celebrate next week. The Feast of the Pentecost. Where the Holy Spirit will dwell, up, will dwell upon the disciples and give them the strength and the hope and the joy to preach the gospel in the midst of trying time. And you know what troubles me about this particular event this past week? Is it gonna be the last? No. It'll be, will it be the last school shooting ever? No. Nope. It won't be. Remember a while ago back I did, I talked about this when there was a shooting, I don't know, in like last year sometime. And I, you know, I, we, we talked about this, is this gonna be the last event? And you said, no, it isn't. And here we go again. And you'll hear a lot of political posturing, of course, in the coming week. A lot of blaming, a lot of, you know, anger, which is understandable. But, you know, at the end of the day, what do you think is going to happen? Happen again. Yeah, oh, happen again. Business as usual, in other words. But it doesn't have to be that way. It could be a transformative event in our life. That, you know, we, can, we have a decision to make, turn to the Lord or turn away from Him. And you know, what keeps me, keep me going in life and motivated is the resurrection of the Lord. It's what propels me in life. It's my mission, my purpose, as I would imagine it's also, hopefully, your mission and your purpose in your life to keep you going. 
And you know, at this past week, as you know, I was quarantined and basically locked away because of COVID. And I can tell you, it, isn't a, it ain't a fun experience. It's miserable. I will pull the punches and say, yeah, it's great. And I have to tell you, you know, in getting through it, I'm thinking to myself, now after getting post COVID, what am I gonna do with this situation? You know, because there's always inherent fear in your, in your heart, your life. If it happened to you, you know what the big question you often ask yourself? Is it going to happen again? Yeah, is it going to happen again? You know that. Why, Aggie? Well, because it happened once. Yeah, you had it once. It's always a question. What can I do to prevent this again? What can I do to stop this again? And your answer, Aggie? You have a little more time to reflect on this than I did. I, I don't really know because we've done all the vaccinations and all the boosters and you just don't know. That's right, exactly. That's the conclusion I did. I did a full booster vaccination. I did. I followed the CDC guidelines to the T. I don't know what else can that, you know can they expect from me. And does that reflect life? That ultimately, you have to live life in the midst of uncertainty, risk. Because to live life, when you think about it, it's a dangerous proposition. Yeah, life is a gamble. Whether you like it or not, that's what it is. You can limit your risk in some ways, but you can't limit 100%. And we all have a decision to live. We give them to fear. Give them to fear. Isn't part of us already dead in a sense? You know, someone once said, you know, a hero died once, but a coward dies many, many times. Why is that? Because he's given it to fear. When, you, when he's so afraid to live life, you may ask, what's the point of living if you're gonna be that afraid to live life? And you know, Jesus Christ has give, come to among us to give us new hope and new joy in life. We have to, our life has to be different from other people, isn't it? Yeah. Because God has touched your heart, God has brought you to a new land, a new place, and ultimately, the place is going to give to you is a lot better than this world. A world where there'll be no more death, always joy in life. A place where we would never have to say goodbye anymore. No more COVID, no more cancer, no more arthritis, failing health, or any other worries. That's the day I'm looking forward to ultimately in my life. That's the promised land. And the world, you know, despite all its promises, can never deliver that. It can try. And only Jesus can deliver that. And I'm, my question to you is, do you and I really believe it in our heart? If it, we really believe it, then our life has to change to reflect that. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to reflect on what the gospel said to you today, that you are the witness of Jesus. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. A world that lives, continue to live in darkness. A world that continue to live in fear, in worries, in despair. That's what Christians are called to do. And so I just invite you to keep that in mind in your life today as we move forward so that the joy and the hope of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, may be in your heart. And may you all be able to also bring that hope and joy to the other people in your life. Amen. Amen. Let us together confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. All things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial the Father, through him all things are made, for our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated by the hand of the Father. He will come.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name. We offer sacrifices now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, his rising, the light of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts. Sing together the ending hymn of your praise as they acclaim. <laughs> Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit be called heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs>
Join us this Wednesday for Bible study. Getting back to the Word of God is such an important, crucial part of our life, especially this upcoming week. As we all know, it's Pentecost coming up. Reflect on the Word of God and, re and see how God, what God is calling you to do. So join us this Wednesday after morning Mass. And don't forget this upcoming Friday is very special because healing it's a healing Mass, first Friday Mass. Join us for receive the healing of Jesus and give thanks to Him through adoration and benediction. In a special way, I just want to join, ask, invite you to join us this Friday to pray for all the victims and the survivors and, and all the community there in Texas, especially at Rob, Rob High Elementary School. I can't imagine what this week is like for them, or next week, or the upcoming week, or months. How would they, you know, go on with their their life and everything else going on? So I just invite you to keep in mind and join us for Friday, this upcoming Friday for that. And don't forget, you know, life is about celebration. Even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of sorrow, we have to continue to celebrate life and give thanks to God for what God has given us. So join us, remember, <clears throat> June the 12th, which coincidentally is also my ordination day. <gasps> and also delayed birthday, as you know, <laughs> because of this, my sickness. Come and join us. And we give thanks to God, the community together. We have a potluck like that day. But more importantly, also to help out the Ukraine relief fund. So in lieu of gifts or anything, just give a, a check out to uh, the Knights of Columbus. So far, I think we've raised a little bit, about 5000 already. So many thanks for that. So many thanks for, the, for, your, for your generosity so far. So I just invite you to come and join us to celebrate together. Also, don't forget, if you have upcoming birthdays, let us know. Send us a picture of your wedding. No, birthdays. <laughs> birthdays, yes, birthdays. See, I've been out of practice for a week and a half, so just get, 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 get patient with me. Yes, join us for birthdays. Let allow us to celebrate together. Send us a picture of your wedding and a point in memory. Something that you unusual, you don't know, know nobody else knows. Because you know what's gonna happen if you don't let us know something that nobody else knows. You're gonna make something up. I'll make up something up. Right, exactly. And you know when I make up something up, it'll be a doozy. Guaranteed. I can promise you that. I will deliver on that promise. So, all kidding aside, you don't have to share a dark secret. Just share something fun, unusual fact. I'm sure Stella has a many unusual fact about her, don't you, Stella? Very, very many unusual facts. Many more than you can ever imagine. But, but we all do. And it's always fun to know a little trivial facts about each other. So come in and let us know. Also, remember, if you have an upcoming wedding anniversary, let us know so we can rejoice together and celebrate with you. Send us a picture of your wedding and a recent picture and a point in memory of, your life, of, of what happened that day so we can rejoice together. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries. Grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks. 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 Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against wicked and snares of the devil. May God reveal him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking for the root of souls. Amen. Please join us in number 745 from America the Beautiful. Um.